Hey, and welcome to this video on world mini app development. In this video, we're going to be talking about the world app, mini apps, and why you should be building a mini app. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to have some development going. We're going to create our own repository, and we're going to build a mini app on the world app. You can see here that I have a view of my phone. Uh, so I actually have downloaded here the world app. And in this video, we're going to be getting a mini app installed on my world app and actually seeing the development flow of what it's like to actually get it installed on the mini app and to actually develop further so that you can make sure everything is good before you push to production. Okay, so let's set a little bit of context here about world mini app development. So the world app today uh, boasts a 25.8 million world IDs. And over the last month, 7.9 million of those have been active at the time of recording this video. So as a mini app developer, you can come in and create applications that are available to all of those monthly active users. And some of the great things that you're going to get out of this is you get this proof of personhood and create crypto functionality baked right into that. We're going to talk about what that means in just a moment. You're going to see some of these native functionalities that are going to be available to you as a mini app developer. The actual world app itself is available in play and app stores today. Uh, so you can get it on iOS and Android, uh, both the same. And then uh, it allows th third party developers like yourself potentially to build a mini app uh, through what is called a web view. So this term web view was actually something that was new to me. So I wanted to create a slide here to define it. What is a web view? So a web view is a limited browser open inside of a mobile app. That's the easiest way to think about it. This was a new concept to me. Uh, technically, I've never heard of it before, but actually as a user, I've seen it many times before. So if you've ever used something like a Reddit, Twitter X, Instagram, uh, oftentimes what will happen is when you go to click a link in those, they'll create this like limited browser view that allows you to see the thing that you want to click, but not much more beyond that, right? It's not actually exporting you out into the browser. It's giving you a view of that link that you want to see out on the web, which may feel like a browser, but you're still like in the app. It, maybe you've seen that before. If you've used these apps and you've tried clicking on a link, you kind of get the sense as a user that I'm not really in a browser. I'm still in Reddit, right? Uh, but I'm seeing the web. That is a web view. So a lot of applications will use it to keep their users within the application so that they're not actually navigating away. And then you can click out and come right back into the app that you were in before. Uh, some applications like WeChat or Telegram actually give the ability to uh, create apps that have native capabilities within those apps. So things like being able to pay in these uh, applications, you may be able to do that in Telegram or WeChat uh, if you're a third-party application developer building within these native apps. So what is a mi mini app? A mini app is going to be an application that hopefully you as a web developer can build inside of the world app. This is going to be something that is going to open up a web view that we talked about a moment ago, and it's going to provide native access to all these different features that you would want to be able to access as a mini app developer. So these features would include uh, proof of personhood, verification, so you could know that the person that is using your application is a unique human. Uh, so there's many different applications that you can imagine might be useful there. So I think of games most often, right? Like a lot of games are ruined by the fact that you could have many different people uh, using bots, having hundreds of bots representing them. Uh, but in this particular case, you could know that a unique person is actually the represented by that user by having this proof of personhood verification baked in. Uh, you could also do payments and signatures, which is going to allow you to just interact with smart contracts. Any smart contract that you can roll out, you can be able to have the, your users interact with them natively baked into your, your web view from your mini app. What's really cool here is you can build these mini apps using your typical web application development technologies, JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. You don't actually have to go and build iOS functionality and Android functionality, even though users will be accessing your mini app on both Android and iOS. So which native access commands are we talking about? Uh, you can see the latest if you go to docs.world.org. Here you can see all the latest commands at the time of recording. Here are the, all the ones that I could see on the docs. Uh, so things like verify and pay, sending and signing transactions and messages so you can interact with whatever smart contracts you want to be able to interact with. But on top of that, things like even getting haptic feedback or in interacting with the user's contacts on their phone. So you get this ability as a mini app development 
uh, being able to use JavaScript to actually interact with native functionalities on the phone uh, so that you can give like haptic feedback and make it feel like it's something that's natural, a part of the application. So how does Minikit, uh, Minikit provide this native access? Minikit is going to be this JavaScript library that you can use as a mini app developer to be able to interact with the world app. And what it does is it sends a, a web view event, and this is actually code taken from the Minikit, where you can see that it's saying if there's iOS, then you're going to post this message to iOS this way. Or if this is Android, you're going to post this message to Android this way. And what this does is it gives you some way as a uh, JavaScript developer building a web application to interact with the native application, right? You're actually sending this message through and then uh, whether it's the iOS app or the Android app, it'll know how to respond to these things. So if you wanna do something like, give me verification that this is a unique human, uh, you can actually send that payload through and it will respond uh, by sending this through in this particular function. So your dev workflow is going to look a little something like this, where you're going to have your web application. Uh, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at it in Next.js. So you might uh, start your Next.js application on localhost 3000, and then you might see an application just like what you want to be your application on the world app. Uh, this isn't the place to actually test it inside of your local browser because you're not going to have access in your local browser to those native functions that I talked about a moment ago. So what you actually want to do is you want to tunnel this using something like ngrok or Cloudflare Tunnels where you can create a URL that you can test on your world app. This is what I'm going to be doing in a moment, so you're going to see how this works. But basically, you take something like an ngrok, you get an app URL that's going to be specific to your local host uh, that you're, you're tunneling through uh, to a web URL that's accessible. You're going to put this into the world developer portal so that this application is referencing that URL that you put in there, this ngrok URL or whatever uh, tunneling application you're using. And then you're going to go ahead and scan this QR code on the World Developer Portal. And that's going to allow you to download the application into your World app. And that's where you can actually test it. So you can see here, there's a similar sort of screen in my web browser over on the left-hand side, as there is in the bottom right corner, that's actually going to be the web app that I'm going to use in my uh, world app. The difference being that the one inside of the world app is going to give me access to those native functions so I could do things like sign in, verify, pay, etc. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this out. Let's see how this works. We're going to jump right into it. So here I have downloaded uh, or I have saved inside of my browser this mini kit next template. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and clone this down. Uh, so I'll leave a URL available for you to be able to clone this same one down. WorldCoin has a number of different uh, templates that you can use, and this is the one that I chose to use here. This one is going to use uh, Next Auth, which is going to be like an auth solution for being able to log in. Uh, you could tie into that to create user sessions and user records, whatever you want to be able to do. And we're actually going to sign in uh, through WorldCoin so that you can uh, be verified that this is actually a world ID user. Uh, so we're going to take a look at how to do that now. So let me go ahead and grab this URL. I'm going to clone it down and I'm going to say git clone mini kit next template. And I guess I copied it twice. Let me go ahead and name this something like mini fun. I'm going to go ahead and pull up mini fun. This is going to be a Next.js application. Uh, with Minikit already installed, which is going to give me access to uh, those native functionalities that we talked about a moment ago. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit for you here. Um, I'm going to close out on this side. And we're going to say PM PMI to install the dependencies. And then we're going to go ahead and say PM PM dev. Now there's a few things that I need to do to get this set up. Like I mentioned, we're going to have to go out to the world developer portal to actually like uh, create this ngrok tunneled URL that it's going to be able to reference so that it can actually access it in my phone. Uh, but in order to get there, let's run this locally. And the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to need to clone this .env example and actually set some of our env variables. 
I'm not going to use all of them in this video because not all of them are necessary. All I'm going to be doing in this video is signing in. So in order to sign in, what I need in my .env is actually just going to be the world client ID, the secret, and the next auth URL. Uh, in future videos, we may use some of these other environmental uh, variables, but for now, these are the only ones that I'm going to use. So let's go ahead and get ourselves a client ID and a client secret. In order to get those, what we need to do is go out to the world developer por portal. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna go out here to the developer portal and we're gonna create a new app. So in order to get here, you go to developer.worldcoin.org and then you sign in and create a new app. I'm gonna call this mini fun, just like I called the repository. Right now, I don't have an app URL yet because this app URL is going to be that URL that we're going to uh, get via ngrok, which is going to expose our local host uh, to a web URL that we can then access elsewhere. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this blank and then we'll put in gaming because I really like the idea of using proof, proof of personhood for gaming. I think it's super cool to know that the person who's playing your game is a unique person. So maybe you could do something like each person only gets three attempts at a level, right? And that's kind of like, I don't know, it reminds me of like arcades, right? Where you actually care about your number of attempts um, and you're really specific about like, making sure that you 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 give it your best shot because you know that you only have a number of attempts. You can't go like spoof it and be a, another account elsewhere, right? You're a unique, unique human and you only get three lives. I think that's super interesting. Uh, cool. So let's go ahead and create this app. So now we have mini fun. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get the environmental variables by clicking on sign in with world ID, this tab up here at the top. Uh, this is going to make the client ID and I'm going to bring the client ID over here. That's going to go there. And then in order to get your client secret, you need to reset this here and then copy it. And then, okay, cool. So now we're getting close to where we need to be to uh, actually tunnel this URL out, right? Localhost 3000, we should be running our next app here. So if we go and click this, we should see what this looks like. Cool, so we could test some of our commands here. Really today, all I'm gonna be testing is sign in to make sure that that's working. And then we'll try some of these other functionalities when we develop this application further. So this is working here. Now I need to make it work on my phone. So I need to expose this localhost 3000 to a web URL, and I'm gonna use ngrok to do that. Uh, you can use whatever kind of tunneling technology you want. If you like Cloudflare tunnels, uh, feel free to use them. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do ngrok HTTP 3000 to expose that port. This is going to give me a web URL. I'm gonna zoom out just to grab that. And this is going to be important because I need it in a couple different places. One place is going to be this next auth URL. Uh, so that's going to be important to keep it there. Again, we're using next auth here. Uh, you can look up to learn more about how next auth works, but it's an auth solution. That's going to be um, something really useful in Next.js. And what we're going to do is we're going to go over to uh, sign in with world ID. And I'm going to plug in a couple different places this ngrok URL. So one you've already seen, if we go back to the configuration, is going to be the app URL. This is gonna be the main place that when we download the mini app onto our phone, this is where it's gonna send us, right? Is right here, which is basically, you know, a proxy over to our local host 3000. So if we're doing development and we wanna see the latest changes, we can just pull up the app again, see the latest changes on our phone. So let's go ahead and save that. The other place, and this is a bit tricky, is you need to put it in with sign in with world ID. You need to specify at least one URL for the authentication to work. And uh, this through some trial and error uh, and, and looking up the next auth documentation, you can figure out what your redirect needs to be. It actually needs to be your ngrok URL here. And then the route, and I'll put this down below in case you're following along here, which I think would be really useful, is to do uh, slash API auth slash callback and then world coin. So this route you'll actually see inside of your application. And I just want to show you it, but let me just save changes real quick first. You're actually going to see this inside of your app, your API, and then auth, and then this route right here. So uh, this is actually what's going to talk 
to that, that callback URL. So I just wanted to show you where that is. And so this is going to give it a place to actually like call back after we do our OAuth. Um, so that way we can kind of connect all of the pieces here. Sweet. Uh, so that is everything I believe I need to configure on the world app. So the only thing really that's left is to go ahead and scan this with my phone so that we can actually install the application. So I'm going to show you what this actually does. So I have over here my phone. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use my camera to actually uh, scan the QR code. So you're not going to see that part, but you'll see the part where it actually installs. So I'll just pull up my camera here and then we're going to go ahead and scan the QR code. And then what that's going to do is it's going to come back over here and it's going to say, hey, this is an unlisted app. And I'm going to say, go ahead and get the app anyway. And that's going to bring up my app on the phone. Now, if I exit this right here and I go back, you can actually see oops, that the app is now here. That's the app, the test app that you see right there. So I can click into it. Anytime that I want to see any of the changes that I've made, I can go ahead and test them out here. Since we're actually tunneling that through NGROC, you can make a change and see it reflected here inside of your mini app. So what I want to test is if the sign in is working, because that's what we're really trying to get working here. So when I click sign in, it's going to say sign in with WorldCoin. And uh, what's cool there is it's actually, this is my mini app, right? This is my JavaScript, my HTML, CSS. It actually gave me some haptic feedback. Uh, so it's actually, this is like a native binding that it's coming up with this like little pop up here. And I can click sign in and we'll see if this actually works. Looks like it did, and it brings us back over. And now you can see that it says signed in with 0x252. So what's really cool here is we already have a EVM address that we can go ahead and start interacting with. Um, so this is actually something that we can start using right away, right? We could start interacting with smart contracts. We could start sending payments, receiving uh, tokens, what have you. Uh, we can also just take a look at these aren't working at the moment. I'll show you in the future videos how to actually do these. But if you wanted to be able to do something like a verification to verify that this is a unique human, you could wire up this test verify. This is going to bring up similarly, it's going to do that verify command and it's going to bring up a, a native pop up here inside of the world app. Uh, if I was or verified, I'd have the ability to be able to uh, verify that here. And then finally, payment. Uh, so you can see if you need to be able to send payments, receive payments, that sort of thing, you can do that in here as well. And we'll take a look at that in future videos. But that's really all we have here um, for now. I would say try this out, test it out, see how you like it. Um, if you need to be able to make some changes inside your application and test them out, you can uh, make the change and then you'll see it immediately reflected inside of your mini app. And you can just come back in here to your world app as long as that ngrok URL is still working, right? One thing I do want to point out is that ngrok URL, if you're on a free version of ngrok, like I am right here, uh, you could see that it's giving me this like unique ID for the uh, URL. If I uh, come back in here and I start another ngrok session, which I'll go ahead and just do, this URL is actually going to change. So you're actually going to have to reconfigure that in those three places, the .env, uh, and then the two spots inside of the world app. So it's something to be aware of. Um, you could potentially do the paid version of NGROC or use some other uh, version, uh, you know, Cloudflare tunnels, whatever, that might be able to give you some way to test this out. Or you could have your own domain that might be a little bit easier. So you can figure out what works best for you as you want to sort of test this out. But that's basically the development flow of a mini app. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, stay tuned for future videos where we start to look into some more of these native commands that we talked about.